Okay. Here we go. Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> and today, um, why don't you go ahead and pray for your city? You know, maybe you're passing through, you're there for a season. Uh, maybe God has just planted you there and you are rooted there and you know that, uh, you know, that's the place of your uh, of your mission and your call to that place, call to the people. Um, so whatever it might be, you know, it's it's not by happenstance or by chance that you are there. God has a plan and purpose. And uh, so let's um, let's pray. You, know, you go ahead and you pray for the people there. Uh, pray that um, the city would uh, uh, that the people would know God that uh, the gospel, the church would rise up and take the gospel to the corners of the city and um, and uh, that there be a move of God in that place, right? Let's, uh, let's call upon the Lord. Let's just pray for the Holy Spirit. Let's just pray that there'll be an outpouring of the Spirit in that place. Um, let's lift our voices and pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the, the cities that we are from, oh, Father God. Yes, Lord. We thank you that you have placed us there, oh God. It could be for a season, it could be for our lifetime, Lord. And whatever it is, God, we 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 know that it is, um, Lord, it is good and it is for your glory, oh God. And the fact that, uh, Lord, that you you have given us salvation and the fact that, oh God, that uh, you have changed our destinies and you've given us the message of reconciliation and you've called us to be ambassadors of Christ, oh God. Uh, you called us to be spokesperson of the kingdom, oh God, communicators of the gospel, oh God. What an awesome privilege. Lord, to be co-laborers with you, to be co-heirs with you, God. And so, Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, that you placed us there. Yes, we know that uh, the city uh, or the place that you placed us, Lord, uh, uh, need need not be the most pleasant of places. It, the people need not be uh, pleasant and welcoming. God, there could be many ills, there could be many limitations, many challenges, Lord. But the fact that we are there, oh God, um, as um, Lord, as instruments of righteousness, Father God, through whom, oh God, you can work, oh Father God. And I and thank you that, uh, Lord, uh, for the dreams that you have placed in each of us. I thank you for the plans that you have placed in each of us, oh Father God, and plans to prosper, not to harm, oh Father God, and uh, plans of reconciliation. I just pray, God, that uh, whatever plans, Lord, the small, big, large, oh God, that you have placed in us, Father God, that we'll be diligent to uh, pray through, that we will be diligent to take those steps of faith. And uh, I, I also pray for those things that have been uh, put aside or blocked by the enemy, and I come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, whatever fear or intimidation of the enemy that has, uh, that has caused delay in the name of Jesus, let it be removed. And whatever uh, complacency on our side or the work of the flesh on our side that has caused it, let it be removed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be burnt away by the fire of the Spirit of God. And uh, right now, let there be, uh, Lord, I pray that you would, uh, we welcome you, God. We welcome your move. We welcome, Lord, um, Lord, uh, your uh, your plans, Father God. And uh, we just welcome you, Lord. Have your way in us. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our cities. Have your way in our homes, Lord, our streets, our neighborhoods, oh God. Lord, you have your way, Father God. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We just want to declare greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Have your way in our cities. We lift we lift up, oh God, the people in our cities, Lord, to you. And Lord, we pray that they might be saved, that they will have opportunities. Each one of them will have opportunities to hear the gospel and this decide for themselves, God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, okay, biblical preaching. Yeah, <laughs> what happens is like when we you know handle multiple subjects for each class. It's like uh, um, yeah, especially with you know ministry of the pastor, evangelist, teacher, and uh, you know preaching. So much overlap, right? Okay, okay. So we've been looking at uh, chapter seven, like uh, how. 
the Lord Jesus ministered the word. And the reason we are studying that is because he is our example uh, when it comes to preaching, when it comes to communicating the gospel. So, so we've been looking at that. He is our example. And so uh, we've been studying uh, several things. The fact that he spoke with wisdom, with authority. Um, he was con continuously in communion with the Father. And he heard what the Father speak. And he spoke it. And he was giving a, a word in season, a timely word, uh, the right word. Uh, that could change people's hearts and so on. So um, he, we also saw uh, at the end of the class that we saw that uh, he ministered with a with a meek heart. Right? His attitude was not that uh, uh, here's something. You know, he's a son of God. He knew it. He's the eternal word, but he ministered with a weak. I mean, a meek heart, right? And um, and we know that that is not a weakness, but that it's that it's a great strength. Um, and with humility, he ministered, and um, and his words were words of uh, truth and grace. And those who heard it could not refute the wisdom with which it was, uh, um, you know, it was coming. And uh, and of course, he had harsh words. He had uh, uh, strong words for those uh, for the religious leaders who were who knew the truth but were not willing to. Uh, you know, um, uh, humble themselves to accept the truth, uh, who were af uh, afraid that they would lose their position. So he had strong words for them as well, right? So, um, so we saw that he used uh, Old Testament uh, scriptures. And in fact, uh, that's a great test for us you know, about the canon of scripture, um, you know, the kind of books that he quoted from and he quoted extensively from uh, from the Old Testament. Uh, he used illustrations, parables, the common, common man could uh, relate to and uh, identify with and so that the truth would um, uh, would be uh, uh, would be made clear and simple and every time you know it it will remain right uh, they will remember so he's uh, he ministered uh, in that manner and we also see that uh, whenever he ministered that, that the power of the holy spirit that the power of god was present Right. Um, it was not just uh, words. It was not just uh, speaking, but also it was in demonstration. There was the power of God present to uh, to uh, to demonstrate in terms of uh, and the demonstrations were manifested like healings and deliverances and miracles and so on. So um, in your notes, uh, I noticed that um, page 19, it says Luke 5, 7. Actually, it should be Luke 5, 17. Right, the end of uh, uh, page 19, Luke 517. Uh, there's a, a error there. So Luke 517 talks about how the power of God was present uh, to heal them all. Right? And we also saw that he ministered out of compassion. He saw the people. He saw that they were like sheep without shepherd. He had compassion on them. And uh, and um, uh, Mark chapter 6, I, I think, yeah, Mark chapter 6 and verse 34, it says, so he taught them. Okay, so he taught them. So he, he just wanted them to be... Um, uh, to be strong, he wanted them to have a sense of purpose and direction. Says, you know, uh, the first part of the verse says that they were with like um, sheep without sh uh, shepherd, and so uh, he had compassion on them, and so he, um, uh, he, so he taught them. Okay, so let's go to chapter eight, and how does this apply to us? You know, as a New Testament believer, minister, uh, called to carry this truth and communicate this truth you know how does this apply uh, to me as a new testament minister okay so now i know that the lord is uh, the lord jesus being the you know eternal word the living word he became flesh and uh, he he was a deity wrapped in human flesh uh, with emotions with feelings and uh, he was in constant communion with the father and uh, and uh, of course he had emotions he had feelings and but he uh, you know declared the word spoke the word uh, so how does that apply to me you know as a new testament minister so we're going to look at a few things uh, some things are very practical and most of these things uh, that we can immediately you know uh, maybe some of these things that we are walking in already um but uh, it's a it's a reiteration that um, you know going back to some of the basics right um it's like uh, you know sometimes you play a game and um, you know you you play that let's say badminton you play for a while and then um and then you leave it right you um 
and they get then you get back to it after a season and then sometimes these basic things you have to remind yourself you know i remember i, I used to play tennis when i was young uh, when i was in school um and then i remember the coach telling me you know you you hit the ball and then you come back come back immediately after hitting don't just you know just um, meditate or just uh, you know, look at oh how wonderful the ball went and how wonderful I hit it. Don't just think about that. Hit it, it's gone, and now you come back to your position. Be alert, be ready. And some of these things came back to me when I was playing. You know, badminton, um, uh, not tennis, but badminton with my daughter. And you know, come back to that ready position. Just these things, basic things, just came back to me. Uh, so it will be looking at some of these basic things that uh, you know, a, a reiteration of that. For some of us, maybe it's new, and uh, we can just put it into practice. Okay, so let's look at a um, few of these things. Uh, I'm on page uh, 20, if you're following in the notes. Okay, so uh, as New Testament ministers, one of the things is that uh, we we need to understand that, yes, God um, uh, you know, knows that we have emotions, that we have feelings, that we have limitations. But God entrusts us with his word and for us to be communicators of the word. So he has no problems, like right from... Uh, right, right from the Old Testament, we see that he put his word uh, in the mouths of people, in the hearts of people, that they will speak it out, that they will declare it, and uh, and and things would happen because of it, because his word carries power. Now, what about uh, a, a human being who is frail? What about a human being who is flawed uh, and he is, is still a work in progress, is not perfect? So uh, does that mean that the word uh, cannot be ministered through such a person. Well, the Lord does not think so. Um, the, we are works in progress. We are uh, being shaped and uh, being refined by him uh, as we yield to him each and every day. Um, and the word entrusts, and the Lord entrusts us with this word to communicate the word. Okay, But we need to understand that uh, we we have, we are people who have unrenewed thinking, who have the appetites of the flesh. Okay, so these need to be, uh, you know, these need to be worked upon, or these need to be um, addressed, right? Um, so that we become better vessels who would communicate the word. That um, you know, God uses our natural talent. He created us. Uh, you know, we are in the image of God. And we could be intellectual, we could be clever, we could be funny, we could be, you know, our personalities are different, right? So uh, no two people are alike, right? Uh, like a, a person might say, you know, just uh, speak it out. And, uh, and that's the most authentic way in which that person communicates. The other person might, uh, you know, add a little bit of humor, and uh, maybe the other person thinks a little differently. You know, the, the way um, the the person wants to illustrate it could be, you know, maybe uh, connect that with science and um, the bigness of it and bigness of the universe and so on. Um, I don't know if you heard Louis Giglio, right? Uh, Louis Giglio. Um, uh, it talks about um, uh, how great is our God is one of his, uh, uh, I think, messages. Where it talks about the bigness of the universe and uh, the greatness of the universe, talks about the stars, uh, you know, and and goes into great details to talk about them, and then talks about the human body also, uh, and the wonders of it all, and uh, and talks about uh, and, and relates that to God. So, um, will people have different ways of communicating, right? The way they are created, the way they are wired, the way they think, but. Our flesh has to be worked upon in order to communicate um, uh, clearly, in order to not contaminate the word. Okay, so our flesh, um, our unrenewed thinking, our motives, right, that needs to be worked upon. Um, uh, that we need to take responsibility for that. Right, God will convict us. God will speak to us, but that needs to be worked upon. Right. We are works in progress, and, and these things need to be worked upon. Like, you know, am I sharing this uh, so that there will be an applause for myself? You know, am I sharing this so that I will appear clever, uh, in order to appear clever and, uh, you know, intellectual? Am I sharing this, um, this particular illustration? You know, what is the motive? What is the motive behind that, right? And um, uh, so 
well uh, you just ask the lord and the lord deals uh, you know the lord uh, convicts about something and you know you know otherwise you just go ahead go ahead and uh, you're clear you know you're free um, you know uh, so don't uh, don't anything uh, limit you your personality you don't have to be like someone else right and uh, god has created you maybe to be funny to be clever whatever but um, go ahead and share the word okay it's just that our flesh needs to be worked on okay um one of the things that we see is that um god uh, wants us to receive the word first personally uh, yes he's using us as mouthpiece as an ambassador as a spokesperson but god's desire is that the word first first goes in becomes part of us changes us works in us and we obey the word we carry out uh, what it says and make it part of our life our living before we release it right um so it is not as if here's a message for you and it's not applicable to me you know that's never the case right the word cuts us first the sword cuts us first and deals with us and uh, we uh, grapple with the word we receive the word and make it part of us it, the word becomes flesh in us a reality in us and then we speak it out or we release it or communicate it okay and uh, we see that in uh, in the in the gospel of matthew i think we saw it earlier also um matthew chapter 5 and verse 19 right the lord says uh, matthew 5 and verse 19 whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven but whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven so the the principle is to do and teach right do and teach make the word part of uh, my life i walk in it i apply it i you know grapple with it and uh, i engage with god with the word with the revelation and and then make it part of my life i obey and i you know share that and it, uh, and even as i am sharing um, i understand that it's applicable to me even as we communicate the truth we we realize we we understand we acknowledge that it's applicable to us so we are we include ourselves right in the uh, it comes uh, you know the the applic uh, application of the word uh, the accountability for the word uh, that is being preached we include ourselves we come under that covering okay uh, it's never just for the audience and and therefore our language also will change when we communicate the word it's it's not just you and you know yes sometimes we need to you know share that and speak that and say okay you know god is asking you to do this god is you know but it also at the same time you you understand or you acknowledge that god is calling you you know that you includes you as well so it's it's us right so um god's desire is that it the word becomes part of our you know we receive the revelation in our spirit we receive his word in our spirit it's part of our thinking it's part of our meditation uh, we think or, or about over and over it uh, we dwell on it let the word abide in us um, it's part of our speaking it's part of our confession and it's part of our obeying and living and uh, he calls us to deliver it Right? the word becomes flesh in us and then it flows out to others okay um sometimes what happens is uh, you know we place ourselves under unnecessary pressure to bring something new every time we you know we, we speak every time we uh, you know uh, we are called to share uh, we we place ourselves under unnecessary pressure and say I need to bring something new. Okay. Well, it's a good desire to to share something new, to share uh, uh, something that the Lord has taught and uh, Lord wants to teach. Right. It's it's a good desire, but also we need to understand that um, 
whatever the Lord has already spoken to us, okay, whatever the Lord has already taught us, maybe it could be about various things, about faith, about prayer, about worship. Um, the, the Lord adds new light or, you know, he adds those lines, line upon line and precept upon precept. He adds those layers to what he's already taught us. You know, I'm sure in our own lives, you know, um, maybe three years ago, whatever we uh, understood about prayer and worship, we have grown in our understanding, right? The Lord has taught us and it has added, those layers have been added, right, to our understanding. So this increased light upon what he has already revealed uh, is also something that we need to share. So um, it doesn't have to be something that's absolutely, you know, uh, new to you and new to, it doesn't have to be. Well, if it is, that's great. But it is also what he has already spoken, right? What he has already spoken, and uh, and and sometimes it's it's this uh, it, what he has already spoken to you, but it's something maybe new to the audience. What he's already spoken to you, and uh, um, something fresh to the uh, to the congregation, to the audience, to the listener. And the Lord knows the hearts of the listener. The Lord knows the needs of the listener better than us, right? Um, we we see the outside, and uh, I remember uh, hearing um, testimony of this person who was, uh, um, you know, who was uh, sharing in this uh, to this particular audience. I think it was some, somewhere in Eastern Europe, somewhere, and uh, he's sharing, and then uh, you know, people are uh, the people are all you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, very upbeat and uh, saying their amens and praise the Lord and. Uh, you know, they are totally with the message and uh, but the Lord asks him to, uh, you know, at that moment, this uh, kind of a turning, this uh, transition, and the Lord asks him to address some issues um, about uh, mental health and about depression and so on. And he's like, he's like struggling, you know, within saying, God, you know, these people seem to be totally free and liberated and uh, and enjoying the freedom um, in the spirit, and and you're addressing, you're asking me to speak something, uh, but then he he cannot shake that, you know that uh, that prompting, and he goes ahead and addresses that, and then he finds that uh, like a majority of them are struggling in, in that area. So so the Lord knows the needs of the of the, of the audience. The Lord knows the hearts of the audience, and so um, so when he uh, you know, prompts us to share something. Maybe it, it could be something that uh, we know already, or we have spoken already, or something that we think, according to our natural abilities, we think that, you know, why, you know, I don't see that. It doesn't seem to make sense. Um, another example uh, is, uh, you know, we have, uh, we had a guest speaker and his, uh, uh, a prophet, and uh, every time he comes, he, of course, he teaches on the prophetic and uh, teaches about, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, about a deeper life in the spirit and so on. So he had come a couple of times with the team and, and, and shared and addressed that. Um, but that one time that he came, uh, it was a very totally different message, right? It was about volunteering, serving in church. And so, um, so he saw, he, he shared. The, and as leaders, you know, as pastors and leaders, we were all going, wow, because um, that month or the from the following Sunday, we were going to talk, you know, we were going to talk about serving in church and volunteering, and uh, we had planned all that. And uh, so none of this was, uh, you know, uh, none of this was uh, uh, communicated to the church yet. It was just... Um, Plan. So I remember Pastor coming and asking me, "Hey Jay, did you share any of this with him?" And I said, "No," <laughs> you know. And uh, so he said, uh, uh, "You know, me neither." And then, uh, and we were really, uh, you know, impressed. We went and asked him, you know, why did you share this? And then he said, uh, you know, he was really struggling with God because it was not his usual uh, message 
but he, he felt that he felt strongly that this was the message God had given him to share, and he had to share it. And so he was really struggling with God. He was really, you know, uh, asking God, God, why? You know, why not something on prayer? Why not something in the prophetic and demonstration of the prophetic and so on? But, but this is it. And that was a clear demonstration of the prof prophetic, right? Right there. And even though it was a very unusual message, something that he would not normally share um, so uh, we saw that right uh, right before us in action right so it's a the Lord knows the need the Lord knows the needs of the hearts of the people and uh, he you know sometimes it's a message that you've heard sometimes it's a very simple thing like okay God is love and you're like oh man this is so basic how can I you know I want something something more or something more meaty uh, but the Lord says, no, just speak about my love, right? And uh, and when you share that, then you know the fruit of it, right? You believe it, and then you take it, and you share it, and you know the fruit of it. The fruit of it. So so um, that's the thing. Uh, so every time uh, we share the word, sometimes it's something that's already been shared, but it comes with a new and a fresh anointing. Okay, And the Lord, could highlight a, a, a different facet of the same truth. Okay, for example, you know, let's say I'll just type out a statement. Okay, the um, Lord is my shepherd. Okay, okay, um, Psalm twenty-three, and all of us have heard this. Uh, psalm over and over again and this verse um, the lord is my shepherd the first part of that verse i i, I will not have walk more i do not i, I do not uh, lack anything the lord is my shepherd i do not want now you know let's say the lord uh, asks you to share this word or this is the message that he wants you to share and, and uh, sometimes you're struggling lord um, you know this i i yeah i've shared this before and uh, you know why should I share this again? But the thing is that yeah, it's a truth that we know. It's a truth that we've shared. But that day, maybe the Spirit of God wants us to highlight one aspect of this, a different facet of the of this message of the truth. Right? It could be about the the Lord. He just wants to highlight that the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And he just wants to highlight that part. Or it could be um, the Lord is my shepherd. It's just that, that's just that word you know, for me, right? Not for, I mean, of course, for the entire uh, world, but he's mine. The reality that. He's so personal, the reality that, you know, he is there to lead me. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay. Or it could be the focus on um, shepherd itself. The Lord is my and highlighting shepherd. Right. Or it could be all three. Like you see, you know, it is a simple statement. The Lord is my shepherd. And... Uh, a revelation that maybe we received many years ago. The Lord is my shepherd. Maybe we've experienced that. But the Lord wants us to share with a fresh anointing. And the breath of the Holy Spirit is on various aspects of it. Okay. So as a New Testament minister, you know, as a believer, as a communicator of the gospel, or of the, uh, you know, of the truth, it's our privilege, it's our joy to just engage with God, to commune with God and say, God, I want to know your heart. What is it? Yeah, this is stuff that I've heard that you've taught me. But God, you know, where is the emphasis? What do you want me to lean on? Right? Um, and maybe some of you are, you know, lead in worship. And it's the same thing, right? When you lead in worship, maybe this, this is an old song. And, and you're saying, God, you know, oh, God, this is a song we've done before. But the Lord wants to breathe something fresh and emphasize something, some truth in that, in that song, maybe in, in one word, in one line. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> right, Charles. Is, uh, is uh, right. Yeah. Let me just put that. 
that's wonderful the lord is you know the present thing so it's it's not just three but it's four i'm sure there, there's many you know, many facets to that uh, truth so the so the, the thing is this that the lord wants to uh you know uh, emphasize something new right and that comes out of us engaging with him out of us walking with him and talking to him and talk and hearing from him and we have this privilege um so it does not just so you see that it's when we when it comes to communication of the truth and um you know it's not just uh you know it's not just information that we are sharing but uh, along with that information along with that message the spirit of god is engaging and he's highlighting and is you know speaking up picking up something and he's saying okay now now this is what this is what I want you to emphasize, and this is where the need is, and so on. And sometimes we do not even know, like we we don't know that uh, we don't know our audience, and we don't know that um, that some something like like for example that, that that you know that prophet who came and spoke, and he was struggling with God. He was, why God? Why? He didn't know anything about you know the need of the church or the plans of the church, but but the Lord knew. And the Lord was in, interested, and therefore the Lord uh, was willing, as long as this person was willing, to you know give the message. Right? And so we ha we have an amazing privilege of communicating this way, uh, of sharing the truth in this way. So preaching, uh, it's it's not just uh, a download or a you know of uh, something that we just unload. Or unload. I think that's the word. We don't unload anything on people, but really we are engaging with God, uh, getting His heart, His heart of compassion, and getting His heart of what He wants to uh, be done. Okay. So, um, so, uh, so that's the thing. Okay. So the other thing is that <clears throat> we are privileged to receive, uh, you know, revelation from God, things that are that we are ignorant of okay? a truth that comes alive to us personally so that you know in our spirit so that we know that we know that we know that you know this is something you know and he does that in amazing ways he does that in ways that you and i understand okay um i think um that, that that's the beauty of you know when we meditate on the word of god when we meditate on the word of god and he he makes this truth come alive and it's not that the word of god is not alive but he come alive to us right and uh, highlighted to us that we don't forget that we always remember that right and uh, and that privilege we have of receiving a revelation about things that we do not know things that are mysteries of god that are hidden for us to discover, right? Hidden so that um, we were, we were, to, it'll be revealed to us by the Spirit, right? I maybe I my natural senses have not seen it, eye has not hear, uh, seen or ear has not heard, not have entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. But the Spirit of God reveals these to our, to us, to our heart, to our inner man. Right, so we receive revelation um, from God. Um, you know, if you read Galatians one, we read about Paul and how he received the revelation. In um, you know, it was revealed to him uh, about um, about Jesus. Right, uh, revelation. I'm sorry, Galatians one and verse fifteen. Um, verse fifteen, verse sixteen, actually, verse fifteen and sixteen. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. And then he talks about this, all his experiences. But the fact is that uh, God revealed, you know, God opened his eyes. Uh, he, in that encounter, he revealed who Jesus was. He re God revealed uh, his son. Uh, and uh, to Paul in his spirit. And Paul writes about that and he says, it pleased God who separated me, called me to reveal his son in me. I received a revelation about Jesus. I received a revelation. And, and you see that when you receive that revelation, um, you, no one can actually put you down. 
right? When you receive that revelation, no one can stop you because you know that it's it's beyond just human understanding. You know that there is deep conviction and it's it goes, it even bypasses our intellect sometimes and it's deep down in our spirit, right? And 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 that's why the you see the people it's, you know you read about Stephen and and all the others they're saying this is this is this is it this is it this is the truth I'm willing to die for it why because this is the truth and Paul saying you know for me to live is Christ and to die is gain right why this is the truth and uh, we read um, through Paul's epistles and the, and the kind of things that he went through. And he's saying, it's okay. It's okay. I know. You know. I can do all things through Christ. I know how to live. I know how to be abased. I know how to be content. I can do all these things through Christ who strengthens me. And history is proved over and over again when we see the lives of people and with that conviction. <clears throat> so here's an opportunity for us to get the revelation, um, receive the revelation, from his word to our spirit by the Holy Spirit and uh, and walk in that boldness and courage. And, uh, you know, we see Peter and John. Well, something had happened. And two, we read that uh, they were filled with the spirit. They had that supernatural encounter. Acts chapter three, they go to the temple. They, they you know, perform this miracle on this man who's been sitting there for many years. And uh, and then we read about how they were preaching in the temple, and people seeing, and the Pharisees and uh, and the scribes are seeing the, and and wondering, you know, they are illiterate men now, uneducated, uh, untrained. Sorry, not illiterate, untrained men. But how do they speak in this manner? And uh, and then they realized that they had been with Jesus this encounter, something had happened. They had received something in their spirit because of this encounter, right? Um, of course, I'm just paraphrasing that, but they came to that realization. So when we walk um, and when we when we share something out of a personal walk with God, it's with so much authority, it's with so much conviction. It's authentic, right? It's, it's real. And... Uh, and especially when we've allowed the Spirit of God to work on our flesh, when our flesh, you know, we, we, it's not for the limelight, it's not for the applause of man, it's not for anything else. And uh, and even though you know people might say things, it's just it's just going off your back, right? Because you've already made a decision, you've already made, you know that all glory is to Him. You know who you are. You know who God is, and you know that. You can't do anything. You can't transform people's lives. And so even when people share stuff or say something about you, you know that it's it's actually God. So it just goes off. It just bounces off. And, you know, you give the glory to God and your flesh is worked on, right? And we become a vessel uh, useful uh, for the master. Okay, so we speak out of personal walk. So that's the thing, you know, we receive revelation, we engage with God, we speak out of personal walk with God. And it results in boldness and courage. And uh, and I just pray that all of us, you know, we will have, um, we will minister out of that kind of an experience or out of that walk with God. Right? Uh, so it will uh, whatever you share will be with uh, with conviction. Uh, it, whatever you share will be authentic, real. Because the world, you know, what, what I've realized is that the world is really looking for authenticity. You know, what is real? Uh, yeah, they might not agree with the message, but they're willing to give a listening ear. You know, when, whenever we did, uh, you know, street evangelism and, and shared with people, Oh yeah, they they did not uh, agree with everything that we shared, everything that, you know with the gospel. They do not, but they were willing to listen because they saw that okay, uh, here knows real. He's not out to manipulate me, sell me something, sign up for something. But here's a person who's who's real. Okay, so um, the Lord is looking to us to have that um, you know that characteristic. 
when we minister, when we share, right? Okay, so Charles says uh, a testimony about, yeah. Uh, we'll, co we'll come to that, Charles. Uh, I just have one more. Uh, I just want to share a few more things, and then we'll come to uh, before the, we end the class. Okay, so uh, the other thing is continuous revelation gives birth to continuous ministry. So which means that the raw Lord, you know, we go to God, we don't plateau off uh, um, on whatever subject. On, on you know whatever subject that we uh, we have learned or the Lord has taught us, uh, there's there's always more. There's always more, so we don't plateau off. And this continuous revelation, the Lord puts in our hearts so that, of course, we are impacted, we are changed, and that impacts others also. It overflows to others' lives also. So, so there is this continuity of receiving from Him having our lives change having our lives impacted and uh, you know uh, that flowing out of us that river flowing out the river of the spirit of god flowing out and uh, impacting and changing others as well okay so without this uh, then it's it's not really the ministry of the word right uh, without this it becomes dry it becomes uh, uh, um, it's not something that is transformative, right? Well, God will even use that, right? But then, um, but this is what God really wants, then, you know, to receive the revelation and to minister out of that. Okay. So uh, quickly, let's just look at uh, 2 Corinthians 3 and verses 1 to 12. And uh, it, it talks about certain emphasis about, uh, you know, as a New Testament minister, like Paul talks about his experience and he's saying, you no, know, this is how I view you and, um, and the people who, to whom he was ministering. And uh, this is what, what does in our hearts, in your hearts, and so on. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. So um, Second Corinthians and chapter 3, okay, uh, I'm just going to go through. Uh, so, verse one: Do we begin again to <clears throat> commend ourselves, or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Verse two: You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. So, he's, so, um, so Paul is saying that, uh, talking to the Corinthian church and saying that you are our epistle, you know, like a letter. Uh, written, you are our epistle, and you are an epistle written in our hearts and known and read by all men. So, so in other words, he's saying you are in our hearts. You know, as people uh, to whom God sent to minister, you are in our hearts. So there is this uh, engagement, there is this connection, um, which God set up, right? Which God set up. And uh, he's saying you are an art. So there's no disconnect in that way. So the, so we say that, you know, another word to use is burden, right? That we are burdened for a uh, uh, certain location, certain people group. And uh, so Paul is saying you are in our hearts, right? So that is, again, set up a connect. That connect is brought about by the Holy Spirit. Okay. So then <laughs> verse 3. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ. Okay, here, uh, Paul is saying that you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh. So, saying that you are an epistle, now, the author, the one who wrote that episode is Christ. And of course, he used us to minister. He used us to speak to you, to minister to you, to serve you. But that service also, it was written, you know, that uh, whatever we did and uh, whatever we shared, um, that but what Christ wrote as an epistle, you know, it was written not with ink, not with natural means, but by the Spirit of the living God. Uh, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh and of the heart. So he's saying that work of the Spirit, of course, he ministered through us, not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, by the Spirit of the living God and 
in our in your hearts right so um okay so we look at this uh, next class uh, uh, in detail um, so charles you just want to share about um, galatians 1 15 uh, very quickly if you can please um, Charles here. Ah, time has gone. Time has gone. Let's share when we meet. Thank you. Okay, okay. Maybe you can even put it in this um, stream, so we can you can share then. Fine. You can put it on the stream also, so we can read it. Okay. Right. So uh, next class when we come, we will uh, look at it in detail. Second Corinthians three, and uh, and uh, you know uh, and look at it in more detail where Paul says you know how. God used him and his team to minister, but it was actually the ministry of the Holy Spirit and how he wrote on people's heart. And uh, and, and so we understand that um, that the Spirit of God is the one who does the work of transformation. Right? It's it's not human manipulation. It's not it's not what I do, but um, it's it's the Spirit of God working on or writing on people's lives uh, the transformative work. And so to really allow God to do that, right? And uh, so um, despite us, in spite of us, to allow God to do that. Um, and, so, so, and, so, and so the beautiful thing, the, um, you know, and, and also the liberating thing is this, that it takes the pressure off us, right? So we are not like achieving or trying to do something and bring about all that we're doing is communicating it. Of course, engaging with God there is that engaging in the hearts of people there is that using those you know our minds and, and natural means to illustrate it but you know we understand that the Spirit of God is the one who's having a conversation while we do that and he's the one who is bringing about transformation right and and that's so liberating that takes the pressure off and so you're free to do uh, free to engage with God and free to you know minister right um with the liberty that the spirit of god gives okay so we'll stop here and uh we'll meet again on friday uh, the same topic okay thank you so much god bless Bye. thank you pastor